Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hong, for introducing me, and uh, uh, thank you for having me uh, here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, mm, complications of uh, LVAD, uh, especially uh, infection and thrombosis and hemolysis, uh, and especially based on my uh, limited experience in Samsung Medical Center. So, uh, if we look back at uh, all the uh, complications of uh, LVAT, uh, we still have, uh, have to face a lot of uh, complications after surgery, such as uh, rehospitalization and uh, bleeding and stroke. And then today's topics, such as uh, infection and device malfunction and clotting and hemolysis, is also quite common complication after uh, LVAT implantation. So uh, first, for the infection, uh, there, uh, there is a classification suggested uh, by uh, this journal. Um, so there is a three classes. Uh, so first is actually a VAT specific infection, such as a drive line infection and pocket infection, mm, and uh, uh, cannula or pump itself infection. And there is another uh, class uh, we can call VAD-related infections, such as uh, infected endocarditis and sepsis and metastinitis. And there is another infection uh, we can call non-VAD infection, hospital-acquired pneumonia or cholecystitis and then UTI. So these are uh, uh, bacteria box, uh, uh, especially related to VAD-specific infection, mostly uh, skin flora. And if you look uh, uh, from the time frame, uh, so within one month after implantation, uh, most common infection is actually a bacteremia and sepsis. Um, and then second is non-VAD infections, such as uh, pneumonia or cholecystitis. And uh, uh, after uh, two, one or two months, uh, the VAT specific infection incidence actually increased a little bit, but still remains in low. And uh, so, if uh, in my in our experience, uh, we have uh, experienced in uh, pneumonia and ARDS after immediately after LVAD implantation. These are our cases, as you can see here, uh, quite severe bilateral pneumonia and combined sepsis after surgery. It's relatively common. And then let me show one case. Uh, uh, this case was uh, 48 a male who had a STEMI from uh, left main uh, total occlusion in other hospital and a cardiac arrest. So they uh, uh, put on ECMO, put him on an ECMO and uh, performed PCI and reopened left main. Uh, but uh, because of ECMO related complication, patient had a uh, very severe right arm and left leg ischemia, and uh, send the patient to our hospital. We have to uh, actually amputate the right arm and the uh, left leg like this. Uh, looked quite terrible. Uh, even if patient was very severe septic shock after ECMO, uh, after, even, if, uh, even after amputation, uh, we were uh, able to remove the ECMO with marginal hemodynamics. Uh, after 24 days after uh, uh, initial myocardial infarction and ECMO therapy. So after ECMO weaning, patients still in a very severe heart failure and they suffer from pneumonia and uh, amputation stump infection. Patient on uh, uh, three uh, uh, on VAC, on the, one is on the right arm, one is on the left leg, one is on the left groin. And the patient was on uh, CRRT. And um, as you can imagine, a uh, patient uh, uh, had in and out cardiogenic shock because of heart failure uh, and uh, actually uh, ended up having very severe cardiogenic shock and, uh, because he doesn't have uh, uh, right arm and left leg. And uh, we already used uh, both, uh, both uh, femoral vessels for the ECMO and other uh, uh, central lines. Uh, patient was already on epinephrine, very high dose of epinephrine, dobutamine, and uh, norepinephrine. And at the time, patient uh, uh, showed carbapenem and resistance gram negative bacilli from the trachea. And then, or, from the older wound, surgical wound patient had uh, MRSA. Uh, patient already in the ICU for 74 days. Uh, 
this is the x-ray when he had a concert for uh, some kind of surgical management of this patient. So what he have done is actually uh, performing a temporary extracorporeal LVAD um, because we don't have any available peripheral artery for ECMO uh, because we worried about uh, uh, the infection, wound infection from even because of the extracorporeal uh, cannulation, we used the upper partial sternotomy and the uh, mini thoracotomy to cannulate uh, LV apex and ascending aorta. And uh, uh, put him on a, uh, by putting him on a, this extracorporeal circulatory support, uh, we kind of uh, able to control the infection. Um, but um, this was uh, just temporary option. So uh, after stabilizing this patient, uh, we uh, uh, switched uh, to edge vent implant using the same incision. And um, because we also worried about uh, on the infection, we used the same incision. Um, as you uh, uh, imagine, uh, we also uh, faced a very severe sepsis after the surgery. And uh, after uh, overcoming sep sepsis, uh, patient, we sent the patient to the floor and then had an aspiration pneumonia again. Patient had to come down uh, and uh, have to treat for the uh, aspiration pneumonia for a while. But fortunately, the patient was able to go home. Finally, so this is recent uh, chest X-ray from the outpatient clinic of the Propest Choi. And uh, if you look at the vast specific infection, um, so driveline infection has the prevalence has, has been known up to thirty percent. <laughs> so incidence wise, zero point three two to zero point five eight events per year, and eighty five percent driveline infection occurs uh, after thirty days from the surgery, average onset has been known about six months. So generally skin floor infection. So prevention is uh, one of the most important. Uh, so we need uh, uh, to uh, use a proper dressing technique and anchoring also has been known in quite important. And also uh, like any other disease, uh, early detection and management is also very important. So this, these are current uh, technique to anchoring driveline at Samsung Medical Center. And another important uh, technique to prevent uh, uh, driveline infection is uh, making multiple tunnel. Uh, so uh, uh, previously, we just uh, uh, pull out the driveline through the skin. Uh, but uh, recently, we use uh, double or triple tunnel technique so that uh, once we have a skin infection, uh, driveline infection, we can kind of move axis side to uh, the other side of uh, uh, flank, like this. So these are our case, uh, sorry for the bloody field. Um, uh, we have, uh, this is example of a double tunnel uh, technique. So there is outflow graft and a bed is there. So we pull out, initially pull out driveline through um, my mount is gone actually, so, um, so uh, pull out and then we made another exit here, so kind of uh, double tunnel techniques. This is triple tunnel technique where we pull out and then uh, pull it out here and then one more time here so that we can more, we have more room to move the drive line exit. And then we also made a, a uh, education uh, brochure for uh, patient and ca caregivers and uh, for the nurses and the interns and residents. Uh, we kind of try to keep the standardized uh, uh, way to do this dressing. Uh, we feel that this is really helpful to prevent uh, driveline infection. So let's go for uh, thrombosis and hemolysis. Um, from Inomax uh, definition, uh, so when we define suspected thrombus, so we need to two or more below, like uh, hemolysis, heart failure, not explained by structural heart disease and abnormal parameters, and also uh, should accompany, accompanied by a thrombus-related event. And then uh, for the hemolysis, uh, 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 there's uh, the plasma hemoglobin and LDH level is quite useful to diagnose. Uh, 
uh, like any other intravascular uh, hemolysis, uh, urine color, uh, and, and un unexplained anemia, and hyperbilirubinemia, and uh, also pump malfunction or abnormal parameters are useful to diagnose uh, um, hemolysis and pump thrombus. So why is important? Um, uh, we have have known that this uh, pump thrombosis is quite affect the uh, long-term outcome of this patient. And uh, because uh, it may cause uh, stroke and embolization and require uh, another risky surgery such as drive uh, device exchange and finally end up uh, terrible outcome. And then in other aspect, hemolysis is also a kind of uh, systemic disease. Uh, uh, it has been known to uh, cause uh, nitric oxide depletion, and, uh, which may cause endothelial dysfunction and pro-inflammatory effect, and then oxidative stress to our body, and then smooth muscle dystonia, uh, causing vaso generalized vasoconstriction and GI motility change, and platelet activation end up having uh, intravascular thrombosis. And uh, there are a few uh, algorithms to diagnose uh, diagnose for diagnosis of pump uh, thrombosis or hemolysis. I will just skip it. And then probably everyone uh, have written, read this. Uh, uh, Cleveland uh, group uh, suggested the uh, abrupt increase of uh, pump thrombosis for heart made two a few years before. And uh, uh, if you look at the Momentum 3 trial comparing uh, HeartMate 2 and HeartMate 3, um, surprisingly, uh, uh, a newer generation centrifugal pump uh, showed uh, uh, no uh, pump thrombosis. Uh, uh, however, uh, HeartMate 2 showed 10% well, uh, rate of pump thrombosis for one year. Uh, but surprisingly, the uh, the rate of embolization, such as stroke, uh, was quite similar.